that they're blind. That the devil, Satan himself, has blinded their minds. There's something that you must come to grips with. Because many times you will have friends or family members or even maybe your parents been in church a long time. But yet they're still blind. And when you try to express things to them about the gospel, they don't really see it. And you have to understand that no man can come to the Father unless the Spirit of God draws them. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But still, nonetheless, there are many people that yet the blinders have not been removed off their eyes. The Word of God goes on to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the God of this world has blinded their minds so that the glorious gospel will not shine upon them. But if any time that they would decide to receive the gospel, then the light of God's word will open their understanding and they'll see, oh my God, all the time I've been missing it. It's funny that when you get the Holy Ghost, how you, have, you could have read the Bible over and over and over and then the Holy Ghost begins to shine a little light on, on a particular scripture and you go, oh my goodness, I've never seen that like that before. That's the point that Paul is making. I want to just address briefly, if you will, how the Bible is absolutely true. I want to say these things that it might encourage you to know that we're standing on a sure foundation. That we're not believing uh, fables that are made up. That I don't sit up at night and try to think of something cute to say. Or try to come up with something clever. I'm not a very clever person. I think one of the reasons why the Lord called me the pastor is because I do have a, a way of making things simple. I've been a salesman for 30 years and you have to be able to make it clear if you're trying to sell somebody a product that they don't want. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello. And I didn't say you have to lie to them. I said you have to make it clear. There's a difference. You have to be able to break it down to the easiest fashion for them to understand what you have to offer. The Bible was written over a period of 1400 to 1800 years by more than 40 different authors. That alone begins to make me think, how is this possible? There were, they were from three different continents of the world. Africa, Asia, and Europe. You say, well, that, where does that come from? Well, Moses spent most of his time in the African continent. And he wrote the Pentateuch, or as many people know it as the Torah. It was the first five books of the Bible. The rest of the other prophets and writers wrote from their homeland of Israel which is in the western part of Asia. And then Paul, who wrote most of the epistles, traveled all throughout Europe, Greece, and Italy. And even though the Bible was written in all these different places, they were written and it was written under many different kinds of circumstances. Sometimes it was written during the time of war. Other times it was written during the time of the Roman domination, where they were other times it was written when they were in slavery and they were in sorrow during like the time of Jeremiah. It was written for different purposes. Some of the word was written to bring judgment against the nation of Israel. Other times it was written as correction for the church. Still there is a unity in the Bible. And I wonder how that is possible. That so many writers from so many different thousands of years for so many different eras over the whole globe could write with such unity. And the reason is because there was really only one author. It was God. The Bible lets us know that all scripture is written under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Men that were inspired by God wrote things that they didn't even understand themselves. Many of the prophets looked into the same, some of the things that they had written. They couldn't figure out, what was that that I just put down on parchment? There are many different controversial subjects that are dealt with in the Word of God. Yet none of the scriptures contradict themselves. 
there have been scientists, very smart men, who spend their life trying to disprove the Bible. More so than Christians that try to accept the Bible. Some of them have spent years of looking into historical documents. Archaeologists have done all kind of digs trying to just prove the Bible, but time and time and time again, all they have done is prove the Bible to be true. Amen. There were things that was taught about the war that Moses had when he killed the five kings. They couldn't find any proof of the five kings, so the theologians begin to teach that it wasn't a true story, that it was just a fable. It wasn't until the 1900s that they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> And when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, they had all of the scriptures of Isaiah, and all of the things that told, all of the stories that happened yeah. back in the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. And all they could say was, oh shucks, <laughs> the Bible is right again. Yeah. Yes. And so I don't even flinch when I hear people say, oh, the Bible is written by man. I know that's just, that's just foolishness. It's from a person that doesn't do any research. It's from a person that doesn't do any reading. And with the, with the internet that we have now, man, you can find out everything. 